If you name your starfighter after the god of war, you're setting yourself a high bar to live up to. But then, if you basically build your ship around a huge ballistic gatling gun, you've probably got a fairly good start on that task. But how practical is the Ares Inferno Starfighter, and is it any good in-game? I'm Farrister, and in this video I try to answer that question by spending some time reviewing the currently flyable Crusader Industries Ares Inferno Starfighter. For those of you who've seen other ship reviews on this channel, the format will be familiar. This video is split into five sections, starting with a ship tour, assessing combat performance, reviewing handling and visibility, looking at the operating costs before finally summarising. I've included timestamps in the video description in case you want to skip ahead. And if you're one of the three quarters of people watching who isn't yet subscribed to the channel, you may choose to subscribe to be notified of future videos as they go live. As a single seat starfighter, there isn't too much to cover by way of tour for the Ares Inferno. At the back is access to the ship inventory through the storage locker, which allows you to move items into the ship itself. Otherwise, it's very much just a case of enjoying the sleek lines of the Ares Inferno. The main feature is that huge size 7 ballistic Gatling gun at the front. To enter into the cockpit of the Ares Inferno, there is a ladder on the left or port side of the ship. This brings the player into the internal cockpit. Otherwise, there is no physicalised internal space on the Ares. By way of weaponry, for the most part, what you see is what you get with the Ares. The headline armament is the single fixed size 7 ballistic Gatling gun, which is truly wonderful to fire. Although the maximum range is about 5 kilometers, the effective range seems to be about 2. However, the damage it dishes out is considerable, it's like a hurricane on steroids. Generally speaking, the weapon works best against medium sized targets, which are easier to keep within the reticle, but melt very quickly under sustained fire. Smaller, more nimble fighters can present more of a challenge, especially in close, although against AI, the Ares is still very able to deal with them. The ammunition stores of the Ares Inferno are fairly generous. You can string together a fair number of missions before having to head back to rearm, which is good. In recent patches, other ships have struggled with this, which is a big shame for ballistic ammunition, so the fact that the Ares Inferno can stick around in the fight for a bit is a big plus. The Ares is further armed with a suite of 20 size 3 missiles, which is considerable. Furthermore, it's possible to trade 8 of those for 2 size 5 torpedoes, which is great for big game hunting. Defensively, the Ares carries dual size 2 shield generators, which is a decent defensive offering for a heavy fighter, on a par with the likes of the Vanguard series. The cockpit of the Ares is, frankly, excellent. It's right at the front of the Starfighter, which reduces obstructions, and the canopy itself offers great all-round visibility. That's helpful for keeping an eye on your target, as you'll want to do with the fixed armament. By way of handling, the Ares is a heavy fighter, and feels like it. It's still fairly nimble compared to some of the much larger ships, but certainly wouldn't keep pace with a light fighter. The relatively low SCM speed of 170 meters per second helps to keep the ship under control, but it does carry a little momentum through turns. That said, the Ares feels fairly easy to fly, and the top speed of 1120 meters per second makes it quicker than most of the potential prey it may be chasing down. It's worth mentioning that braking performance is a fair bit slower than the main engines, so although it accelerates fairly well, you'll want to plan any braking manoeuvres in advance. The stock quantum drive is okay. It's probably worth upgrading to an XL1 at some point, but the crossfield is still fairly quick, and moreover, the range is considerable, able to cross between Microtech and Crusader three or four times before having to refuel. 
refueling the Ares is surprisingly cheap given the size of the fuel tanks. You might reasonably expect quantum and hydrogen fuel to price in the hundreds or low thousands of Alpha UEC. Ammunition and missiles are a little more expensive, probably expect to be paying thousands of Alpha UEC when you come to port. Your best money making options in the Ares, unsurprisingly, sit with the huge gun bolted onto the side of the ship. Pretty much any combat mission you'll find in the game, the Ares does well in. Particularly as you take higher risk contracts, that'll mean you can use your Ares to make a considerable amount of money, at least with the current balance. Starting with upgrades for the Ares Inferno, I'd swap out the changeable size 3 missiles for size 5 torpedoes, probably stalkers, and at some point upgrade the crossfield to an XL1, especially if you're doing longer hops. Other than that, I wouldn't change anything. The Ares is all about combat, and having the large size 7 weapon allows it to crack open what would otherwise be some tough nuts. Although the description of Heavy Fighter is fair, this is a ship that is much more comfortable engaging medium sized ships, like a Constellation or Cutlass, rather than other fighters, and is likely to struggle in some dogfights against more nimble opponents, especially against other players. That said, heavier combat is where the money is to be made in the game at the moment, and that makes the Ares a prime contender against the likes of a Hurricane or Vanguard when taking on the task of making big profits in combat. Although some of the marketing material shows the Ares giving an Idris a tough time, I'm not so sure this is a ship you would take up solo against an enemy capital, especially not if the Idris becomes better balanced when the PU version is released. Left unchecked it will certainly give many ships a hard time, but the sweet spot seems to be those medium sized ships, to whom the Ares is a big threat. The generous quantum fuel stores and ammunition also give the Ares much more of a range than many other fighters, meaning in the future it may be a little more independent. The adjustment to the ammo count is nice, meaning that the Inferno can stay in combat for quite some time before needing to rearm, and although it's not the most nimble fighter, it's fairly easy to fly, which reduces the learning curve and is especially important with that weapon being fixed. This may also be personal preference, but the aesthetics of the Ares are also very appealing. So, all that sounds great, what are the downsides? Well, the respawn timer at 10 minutes means if you press too hard, you've got a little bit of a wait before you're airborne again. But the big downside is the price. At $200, it's an incredibly expensive Starfighter, and although you get some pretty good in-game performance if you splash out on it, that's not unusual at this stage of development. What I mean by that is that the newly released chips are often incredibly powerful, only to be better balanced in the future. And at least in patch 315, there's no in-game price for the Ares yet. That said, I have to admit that personally, the Ares Inferno appeals to me. I like how it looks, I like how it flies, I really like the combat sphere it occupies in posing a big threat to those medium sized ships. And I also have to admit that it's one of the few ships that sits as a permanent pledge in my hangar ever since concept, and so far, I don't regret that. But what do you think of the Ares Starfighter? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button, at the very least to help me justify owning this one. Otherwise, as always, thank you for watching.